Hello friends and welcome, welcome to this sacred space. We'll begin our time together by lighting a candle, if I can light the match. And take a deep breath. We light this light in the name of the God who creates life, in the name of the Son who loves life, in the name of the Spirit who is the fire of life. So I am recording this on Monday, May 9th, and that means that yesterday was Mother's Day as we celebrate in the United States. And I want to share a couple thoughts about Mother's Day and a rendering of Psalm 23 that I shared yesterday that focuses on the divine feminine qualities, um, thinking about this idea of God, our mother. And before I do that, I do want to acknowledge that Mother's Day, um, while a, a day of, of joy and grace and family time together, you know, all kinds of different things, it can also be a day of sorrow, sorrow and grief for many different reasons, um, for, for people who have yearned for a child and were not able to have one, for people who have lost a child. For people who have lost their mother and are feeling the, um, the pain of that loss. And for lots of other reasons, um, Mother's Day can be a difficult day. So I certainly think about you if you are experiencing Mother's Day that way and hold you in prayer for healing and for God's grace to be with you. And if it makes sense for you to turn this off right now, feel free. <laughs> Go right ahead. Um, I want you to do what feeds your soul. So, uh, the version of Psalm 23 that I would like to share with you is actually written by Janice Hunt Jackson, Johnson. Sorry, And I thought to look for it um, in preparation for yesterday. Because I remember being a new Christian 25 years ago or so that um, an intern actually at the church where I was attending was doing a children's sermon and his thought was to rewrite Psalm 23 so that the children would understand, you know, God God the provider, God the protector, you know, that Psalm 23 speaks to, you know, this, this young pastor was thinking, well, gee, you know, how, how does, how do children relate to that? You know, how can they think about this God that they cannot see, cannot touch, cannot feel, cannot hear? What is something immediate for them that will get this idea across of God the comforter, God the protector? God the provider, God the one who will walk with them through all times of their lives. And he's the one, I, I give all credit to him, Dave, <laughs> um, who came up with the idea of the image of God as mommy. So with that in mind, I thought, well, we're in the internet age now. And instead of me rewriting one, what if I just look for one? And I did find this one um, from Ms. Johnson. So I now offer this to you. Her rendering of Psalm 23. God is our mother, shepherding me through life. I have everything I need. She makes me take a breather, lie in the grass, and walk by the peaceful lake and feel her healing power. She gives me fabulous meals motivational conversation and steers me in the right direction, for goodness sake. Yes, even when bad things happen or I get into big trouble, I don't have to be afraid of anything because you, mother, make everything all right. Even if things are looking grim and we're surrounded by bad news, you don't run and hide. You protect me. You just keep preparing only the best for me, right there in front of me. You choose me for a special purpose. You comfort me. You always provide me with more 
than I need. Without a doubt, all your goodness, patience, and forgiveness will persistently follow me for as long as I live, and I will live in your heart and home forever and ever. Amen. So that is a relatively contemporary rendering of that Psalm 23. And just so you don't think that this idea of feminine qualities of the divine is something that is feminist and new and, you know, came around in the 1970s when feminism went wild, um, these ideas are very old and ancient and um, predate Christianity for sure. Um, but there are also examples of it throughout the history of Christianity. And one of them is um, some writings from Julian of Norwich. You might be familiar with her. Um, she was an anchoress, somebody who, who lived in a single room in, in a, I was going to say an, an abbot, but that's not the word, um, in a cathedral. So she's, she's living in this cathedral in a single room, an anchoress. She never left the room and had a window to the outside world. And people would come to her for advice. Um, you know, she spent lots of time in solitude, lots of time in prayer and reflection on who God is and who she is in relation to God. So, oh, the thing that you might know her best for, if, if you have, um, if you've heard of Julian before, um, she wrote something that I think you can see printed on coffee mugs these days and on t-shirts, um, but it's deeply powerful, and that is, um, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. And she wrote those words, you know, as somebody who I said was living in a single room during a plague, you know, when people all over her city were dying, and she could look beyond the suffering, look into the suffering and beyond the suffering, hold it all and with that assurance that in the end, all will be well. Such was her faith in God. And so back to the feminine divine, um, she had this to, to say about Jesus as mother. So Jesus Christ, who sets good against evil, is our real mother. We owe our being to him. And this is the essence of motherhood. And all the delightful, loving protection which ever follows. God is as really our mother as he is our father. And she had other things to say, too, about Christ the mother. But I just want to offer that idea to you. Um, not in a way to agitate you or anger you in some way, but hopefully to, to maybe break open um, some heart, your heart to receive something new that God wants to offer you today in that understanding. And just leave that with you today. So may our God bless you and keep you and surround you in love and grace, today and forevermore. Amen.